Now, as the motor industry evolves, so too does training and regulation. We spoke to the Right Honourable John Hayes MP, Minister of State for Transport, to find out how the government is supporting these changes. I'm here with the Right Honourable John Hayes, CBE MP, Minister of State for Transport, to find out how the government is helping the evolution of the motor industry. John, thanks so much for joining us. Do you think there needs to be more investment in the training of those working on electric and hybrid vehicles? Well, I think there's, a, there's two kinds of investment, aren't there? There's an investment in ideas, and then there's the bread and butter issue of pounds, shillings and pence. I think it's really important that we recognise that electric and hybrid vehicles provide new opportunities for business. So working with the motor industry, uh, we're very keen that we provide the skills necessary to make this happen. The business of technology itself, the innovation, working with the universities, I was at Nottingham University recently, to look at some of that kind of uh, first principle investment, how the technology is going to develop. We know that the way people travel, uh, the kind of vehicles they drive are going to change quite radically. It's already happening, isn't it, with electric vehicles. I'm bringing a bill to the house uh, which is dealing with autonomous vehicles, vehicles that begin to drive themselves. So we're right at the cutting edge of very significant change here. So we, we are uh, making those kind of investments. And what about that bread and butter support? Is there likely to be any more of that? I, I'm not close-minded about that, but uh, so, so I wouldn't want to suggest for a moment that we won't continue to look at where government needs to step forward. But it is a partnership. It's a partnership between government and business. It's not all about business doing the work, and it's not about government doing the work. It is really about a marriage between the two. So we know that you're very experienced on the issue of apprenticeships. How is the apprenticeship levy going to affect the motor industry specifically? I'm a great supporter of the apprenticeship levy, by the way, um, because the apprenticeship levy is about a recognition that Britain's future chance to succeed is as a high-tech, high-skilled nation. And that and our greatest investment of all is in our people. And uh, the apprenticeship levy allows us to up the scale of investment. It'll benefit uh, a lot of businesses who are able, as a result of it, uh, to reinvest in their existing workforce and to attract new entrants to, the, uh, to their businesses. So uh, for me, it's a, a, a really positive way of uh, reprioritizing skills. But this is an industry that already recruits over 11,000 apprentices. So is it really needed? Yes, because although you're right, um, there are apprentices in that industry and there have been for a very long time. Don't forget the scale and pace of technical change. The technology is moving on. I've talked about electric vehicles, autonomous vehicles and so on. So the constant business of reskilling, uh, the new opportunities that will come from that technology will require more people with more skills at a higher level. And that's not bad news, that's really good news. Now everyone is talking about pollution. Is there going to be a diesel scrappage scheme? You know, I've got two young sons uh, and I care about the air they breathe. I care about the relationship between air quality and health and well-being. So, you know, um, I'm looking at a new air quality plan actually. We're going to deliver a draft in the spring and a final plan in the autumn. And we've got to look at all kinds of stuff in that. And is a diesel scrappage scheme part of the things no, that you're no, looking I, at? I'm looking in the round at uh, issues uh, around air quality. Um, and uh, no decisions have been made yet. Now, you've been in talks with the IMI regarding the skills gap. Would you consider regulating further to protect technicians and consumers? I think that we need to be demanding about quality, but I'm not sure that largely comes from government, you know. You know, an industry as grown up as this one knows that only through the recognition of quality can it really achieve excellence uh, and, and send out that message to the consumer that they are going to get a product they can be sure of. So I'm not sure it's about government. Uh, government uh, can help. But I think it really is about the industry, and I think they know that. John Hayes, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you.